Hey, what's happening, guys? Hard to believe it's December already. Seems like it was just summer. It's not so long ago, but that's the way the biscuit crumbles, right? So today we're going to take a look at Coit Smart Digital Multimeter. This is the KM601. All the information on the box. Resistance, voltage, capacitance, current. I'm going to assume it has a couple of other features in there as well. I'm going to seal that bad boy here. Let's get her open. All right, upon opening the box, we find six AAA batteries. I doubt it uses nine volts, so they've probably given us an extra set. And we have a user's manual. So I'm just going to flip through here. If you guys want to uh, glean any more information, you can pause the screen. You know, check out whatever you want to check out. Or you could go check out uh, Eddie's video over at KISS Analog. He did an excellent video featuring one of these meters. And uh, if you don't know about Eddie, you should go check him out. Yeah. So, I'll put a link to Eddie's channel down below. This is a... Uh, semi-hard case but it's a nice nice case to keep your multimeter in all right so over here in the left pocket we have your requisite crapo probes and k-type thermocouple Here's the meter itself, and it is not very big, and from the back it looks like a cell phone. In fact, uh, here's my Google Pixel 4, and you can see it is, you know, not much different in size there. Probably about twice as thick. Yeah, three-eighths of an inch taller or whatever. APO. I believe that's the auto power off. Probably no batteries in here. Luckily, from watching previous videos, I know what we have to do. We have to remove this case, which is like a phone case, very nice. And there's one screw there that we need to remove to get it off. Once we remove that screw, if I had fingernails, I could slide them in there. I do not have fingernails, but I do have a spudger. Let's see if we can get that in there. There we go. And it wants tree batteries, so no problem. So it's nice they did give us an extra set of batteries. You never know how long it'll last or you know what'll go on. So it's good that they did that. All right. I'm gonna put this guy back together here. Oh, just down there. All right. For the purposes of our video, I'm just going to leave the protective cover off for now. Hey, look at that. Turned on. That is a big screen. All right, so I'm going to turn it off and uh, get ready to have a look at it. All right, we'll look at it with a what I would call a full-size multimeter so you can get an idea of the size there. And we press and hold to power it up. 
and it is in auto sensing mode so it's looking between voltage resistance and continuity and we are going to be using our probe master probes which we use for every meter we test here and there's a reason for that and the reason is by using the same set of probes we don't introduce any error from the probes into our calculations all right so let's power this up we're testing voltage here i'm set for three volts and you can see it is showing us 3.003 very nice and then we have our little uh, graduated scale down there 0 to 20 all right let's uh no problem button take it up to 10 volts nine point nine eight five and i can see what they're doing here okay so no matter what your scale is bring that up closer maybe you guys can see it better so in this case we're going from zero to ten and you can see we've almost reached there so that's good let's uh take this up further 32 volts i'm getting 31.92 Now let's take it way down, 1 volt, and 1 volt, is showing, there we go, 1.007, so yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's fairly accurate on voltage, with any modern day meter, you know, I would expect that anyway, so, no, but that's good, that's good, I like that, let's check resistance. Okay, so for resistance, I have some precision resistors that we're using in a different product project. So this says 5.1K. Let's clip them on there. I just heard the, uh, oh, shoot. I heard the relay click. Pardon me. Let's try that again. And you can see that we're looking at a 5.102K. Very good. Next up, what do we have? 1.5 megs. They just love to pop off there when I try and do all this with one hand. <laughs> 1.493. And they're, they're coming up uh, relatively quickly. The last one I have here is a 68K. And that comes up right quick. Here's what I'm going to try. Whoa! Jumped right out of there. I'm going to bring this right up here by the microphone, and then I'm going to attach the resistor. So hopefully, Yin's guys can hear the re, uh, relay click. Yeah, I don't know if you heard it or not. So, yep. Yeah, quite accurate on resistance, quite accurate on voltage, exactly as I expected. All right, this time we're going to check capacitances using my little capacitor substitution board here. So, I'll that a better place for you guys to see it. Hopefully, that will stay. Let's see how long we click onto a, resist, onto a capacitor. Doesn't know. That's fine. So that's wrong capacitance. Not showing me anything at 10 pico. Let's try this. We'll go all the way up here. Huh. There we go. So 22, that took a bit to read. A little slow on the capacitor. So this is 22 microfarad. I'm seeing 25.05. That's fine. Let's try 
one microfarad. Let's see if we get anything. Yeah, 965 nano. Close enough. I mean, we're what? 35 nanofarad off. How about we try 10 nanofarad? Yeah. Right on instant pick. No problems whatsoever. Well, since we're sitting here, let's go through and uh, check continuity. I'm just going to assume it's making a noise because it is out of my hearing range. But there's a green light. Zero, so yeah. Oh, I can hear it now. Real high pitched. But that's good. That's very fast. All right, so let's switch to voltage. And again, we got our blinking lights telling us where to go. Just looking for a clean spot to plug in here. Uh, <laughs> one second. All right, here we go. This should work. Ooh, almost 125 volts today. Thanks, American Electric Power, for the extra volt and a half. I appreciate it. <laughs> and you can also see we're getting 60 hertz here. So this all works out very well. Now... We also have our temperature here, and it's reading uh, 68 degrees Fahrenheit, or 20 degrees in that other thing. I'm, I'm just teasing you guys. Let me see if one of these will switch it around. Cool. Let's plug in. The thermocouple and see how that does. I see we want temperature here, so we're going to the same spot. Let's switch through here and we'll just come back and see if it tells us. Yeah. Right there it's telling us where to where to plug them in. Can't beat that. Let me plug these guys in. We'll let that uh, think for a minute, right? I'm going to go get us a couple of uh, test subjects. Hang on. All right, first up, we have a ice water and salt brine solution. which should get pretty close to freezing. We'll let that sit in there for a moment. All right, as you can see, after a minute or so, our brine solution has brought us right down to the verge of freezing. Now, let me go get the hot water. All right, this is right out of the microwave, and it's probably not quite boiling but it'll be close. You can see there is steam coming out of it. While we're waiting for that to uh, come up to temperature, I have some new desk lighting. There's our old desk lighting. There's our new desk lighting. I hope you guys like it. Let me know what you think. So yeah, we're up to uh, 186 degrees there. Now let's quickly drop it back in the brine. Yeah, it goes back and forth pretty quick. This is very nice. Okay, so it has an auto power off feature. So I said it's set for 15 minutes after the last button push. So I'm going to see we can't put this back into auto. Now we're not going to touch it. 
you can see it is 12 19 and 45 seconds just gonna let this roll All right, one last thing we want to check here is the non-contact voltage, which is the NCV. There's the antenna right there, and we'll bring it up to a live voltage. And there, you can definitely hear it making noise. Let me uh, remove the camera for you. Hopefully this will work better. There you can see it. Blinking. Telling us there's a voltage present. All right, let's put the cover back on her here. It is a tight fit, which is, you know, that's what you want to protect your meter. And like Eddie recommended, I'm going to put it in here like that so that it stays safe. Uh, this meter is retailing right now here in the U.S. on Amazon for $45. And I think for $45, it's a heck of a nice little meter. You can see some of the more technical details on the KISS Analog Review. I would like to thank Kweets for sending this out to us free of charge for our consideration. I'd like to thank you for watching these videos and allowing me to have this channel and share some electronic fun with you. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Big thanks to you guys for watching. Somebody's getting a nice Christmas present this year. That's it. I'm out. Peace.